set up in 1994 uh, to to the to display in the Portuguese Christian art, which is very unique in the whole world. And the museum tries to highlight the Indian influences on Christian art. So our pieces will speak, you know, of the Indian exclusively Indianness of the of the collection. We have a lot of textiles in churches in Goa. Just a few of the examples are here. This is a tabernacle veil. But what you see is a lot of gold thread work on the textiles, which is very similar to the gold thread work that is done in the northern part of India, which we call Zardozi. Okay. So, okay. you know, we really don't know who these artists were, whether they were locals, whether they came from elsewhere, whether it was the nuns who were, who were introducing embroidery on the textiles, but it looks like it was a combination of many, many uh, artists who worked together. And if you notice, the the faces and the hands of the angels, mm -hmm. they made of ivory. Yeah. Wow. And the ivory is then sewed onto the textile, which is um, a unique feature of our Goan textile. And it's not seen anywhere else in the world. Till somebody comes and tells me. <laughs> Otherwise, I can, I can say so. And I've asked so many researchers, visitors, whether they've seen anything like this. And, and nobody has said uh, that they've seen uh, you know, ivory on textile yeah. used in this way. Yeah. No, in some, I would say, in some of the Mexican and New Mexican Catholic art on the textiles, they've got the retablos, which are the small, mm -hmm. it's very different though, it's the small body parts yes. that they would they would put on there to pray if they had a broken leg, mm -hmm. a little leg, and, and things like that. But uh, and what material? But it's not, not oh, it's not it's wood. Precious. Somebody told me in wood. In sometimes wood. it's metal, and sometimes it's, it's wood. wood. Yes. Yeah. 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 But not ivory, so yeah. Yeah. And, and not decorative. Okay. Um, it would be purely for, yeah, it's, 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 and it's not really yeah. devotional in that record. This piece be slightly Chinese influence. Is, uh, we had a, the other day we had a research on textiles and she said, you know, the longer threads, uh -huh. the longer stitches were very uh, typical to the artists from, they work, artists from China and they work in this way. Hmm. We have here a book which is dated 1650. It's a book of rules for the girls who wish to join the convent of Santa Monica. What are the rules like? Uh, I haven't read it in all Portuguese, <laughs> but I have all the pictures taken, so at some point I will um, uh, get, get down to reading it. Dave, can you understand? So far, it's not really rules. It's just that sort of long-winded preamble mm -hmm. to. There is one page which which talks about how you would receive the nuns. I you see. Know, how you would get them in the, when really? they first came into the convent. Yeah, this is about how to sort of like set a table. Mm -hmm. How to <laughs> set a table? Not so much for dinner, but for I guess for, for having for, for having yeah for having like a prioress in your in your. Mm. Presence and things like that. Okay. Interesting. And that's just glancing at it. I don't know where you get super careful. I have the digital images. Not digital, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have images. It's not like I've just done the amateur photographs, 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 whatever. For now. But it's good enough to read. Through. That's how Dave has been translating a lot of poems and things yeah. like that, which came in the paper. So it's a good start. Okay. You never know. And then. Yeah, Dave, that sounds like it would be something fun to translate. <laughs> it's, only, it's only 25 She's got pictures of all the Sell him the idea fast. <laughs> Sell him the idea fast. I think of worse things to do. <laughs> <laughs> should, should you give her your card so she can send you the pages of her translation? Sure. I'm hiring you out. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 This is a, a slight change in the display. Earlier they used to be in here and you could not see the front and the back. Oh. And uh, recently we had a workshop on textile conservation and while we got them conserved, we also changed the display slightly so you can now view them from both sides. That's quite something. Oh, great. And two different colors. Two different colors, yeah. The two uh, different textiles put together. I didn't, yeah, I didn't expect that. Where was this textile coming from? 
This one from Orly. Yeah. No, from I mean Orly. Yeah, from the church. The church in Orly. Originally, where would the cloth come from? Any idea? Hard to I say. Don't know, hard to say. Yeah. Maybe Europe. Could be. Could be. But this is early 20th century, I so see. it could be that it came from okay, Europe okay. or some other place, and then True. moved on. Yeah, yeah. 20th century is always uh, you are already seeing a lot of things as coming from Europe. Congregation of the Daughters of Mary. Mary. Only. They took it so seriously, no? They did. I wish we would take preserving them more seriously. Or even understanding them. Yeah, understanding and preserving yeah. them. <laughs> preserving is another level. Understanding is... Why? It's, it's another yeah. level, but uh, if once you start preserving, you start understanding. Mm. I was going to say, we can't understand if you don't preserve it. <laughs> true, true, true. Yeah. So this is uh, the Savior of the world from the Basilica. Usually you would have the, a very small image like this mm -hmm. in the Basilica and you have the larger than life Ignatius of Loyola. True, there. true, true, yeah. true. And this, they say that this was one of the first ones which was there in the in the church, in the Basilica. He really doesn't have any clothes on because he's newborn or what's the reason? Yes, he, because he's newborn. But if he was there up on the altar, he hmm. would have had um, a, a little... Yes, I see. Yes, he would have. Does it have, does it in some way connect with the Indian kind of uh, belief system or something? Because you know, you have this small baby, mm -hmm. unclad, yes. a fertility right which is given yes. from mother, mother to daughter, daughter, to daughter-in-law and yes. you never know, no? What they're saying. It, it could be something similar and we have those um, images of I images. see. These, this is? It's um, St. Uh, uh, Stanislaus Gorska. I see. After whom St. Stanislaus School is named in Bombay. Mm -hmm. See with the Jesuit. Jesuit, Jesuit. Jesuit. He's from uh, Czechoslovakia? Yeah, yeah. One, of those. one of those. Eastern, Eastern. Poland? Could be. Could be. Eastern European. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 With the imprint of Christ, but in the sea. Yeah, I never. Maybe holding the way. And the book? The book is uh, the Bible. Two, yeah. Two sets, the Old and the New Testament, written in Latin. Yeah. Uh, very common, no? I think all the old churches would have something like this. But very uh, unique are the etchings in, in the Bible. And uh, they are described in six different languages. Wow. How with six? This edition? 18th century. And with six languages? Uh, there is Dutch, there's German, Dutch, German, English, um, Latin, Latin, and Greek. Greek. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. And French. French. Just to make sure they left out no one. Yeah. <laughs> From that side of the world. That true, is. true, <laughs> true. true. <laughs> but it's interesting because we as part of our great project to do up the space, we are also going to be conserving the objects and conserving the books and hopefully digitizing okay. the books mm. and the, the, you know, so in case somebody wants to flip, we can even later install a tablet or yeah, to, and they can, go they can go through and see yeah. the more interesting. A history of the book, religious book is a field in itself. Yes. No? waiting to happen, hardly studied in Goa, considering that printing is so old here. So right? old, yes. So these are some of the older paintings that are usually done on wood. Canvas is a much later uh, material that was used mm. in this part of the world. Painting on wood was very common in our own churches. Why? 
easily available. Yeah. 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 And this is a? This is Saint Margaret, uh, sorry, Saint Ursula. And, okay. uh, Thousand virgin, ten thousand, ten thousand. Eleven thousand. Eleven thousand, to be precise. <laughs> but uh, actually, it's only eleven. Okay. Oh. It is only eleven. Eleven virgins, and um, as the story was narrated and written, they would write eleven uh, and M for martyrish and B for virginish. And I think, as the story got told that M translates to thousand. <laughs> thousand. Meal, wow. yeah. yeah, meal, yeah. Wow. And virgin. So many of the churches in Europe claim to have the stouts of the, <laughs> one of the 11,000 virgins. <laughs> Once there's 11,000, then you can make all kinds of friends, yeah. Then it's a small cottage industry, it goes. Yes. And this was, uh, this was found in the seminary of Rashaul. This was at the time when the museum was set up in uh, yeah. Rashaul and then Apparently, when they found it, it had a layer of mud over it. Yeah. <laughs> and they just did a, a clean, up. Clean, clean up. This is now 25, 26 years ago. And what they found was this. And this is how they My left with the traces of guilt on it. Yeah. And it's spectacular the way it is. The guilt is gold? Yeah, it's really gold. Yeah. gold. My goodness. So your history is buried under mud. Yeah. In other words. But it's good that he managed to. True. This chair is? This chair is one of those, it's called a chapter stone, it's from the cathedral. So it must have belonged to the Archbishop. Archbishop. And I think, and I'm quite sure actually, there is a portrait in the Archbishop's house of one of the Archbishops seated on mm -hmm. this chair. Wow. We should at one time do a, a, a little conference and an exhibition on the bishops of Goa, you know, because mm -hmm. there are so many, there are, the portraits are all there. Many of the chairs, I think, will be there, and just objects connected to the bishops. The Portuguese Wikipedia has tons of information on each one of them. Really? So, in my desperation, I even tried to translate using Google Translate. Mm -hmm. It's not the right thing, it's but but you know, you get a sense. It's, yeah, and it's it's since, since it's not literally, it's not so difficult. Mm -hmm. you, know, you get a rough sense of. But the Portuguese Wikipedia, they have tons of. I must go and look at that. Mm. So, uh, since you are. These were the original confessionals wow. for the nuns. Because wow. they used to participate in the mass from this side of the church and the public were allowed to access the main church. They were cloistered? They were cloistered nuns in oh, the seventeenth okay. century. I didn't I missed out that part. This was Asia's first convent to be built in the early seventeenth century. And the nuns who lived here were cloistered Augustinian nuns. And uh, of course they used this space to participate in the mass. There used to be a door here because you have the pond. Yeah, the door used to be here at some point it must have been closed. Yeah. The arch of the door is still there when we go onto the mezzanine you'll see. And they had a first floor which today is not standing because it was a wooden floor and when the convent was abandoned it must have deteriorated and collapsed. So there's total privacy here. You don't know who's confessing and yeah. we were just talking about it when we came. Yeah, we were, been, we were comparing confessionals from the from Immaculate Conception, where for, from the public side, obviously, but it, it's about chest height, so mm -hmm. the priest could see you coming. Okay. And there's there's only like this tiny wall it's between. It's just you. purposes of yeah. confession is just defeated. Yeah. Yeah. No, and you can you can it's actually as, see. Yeah. But this is this is a lot more. Of course, yeah. they know that you're going to be one of the sisters if you're on this. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Very difficult to know when you're 115 yeah. sisters. Yeah. In All your, in the habit and with your yeah. head covered. Head, and yeah. So these are traces of what the convent <coughs> had once been. Mm -hmm. There are still uh, a few uh, of these kind of paintings on the ceilings and on the walls still inside the convent, but many of them have. Uh, either been whitewashed or, mm. uh, or painted or, or, Covered or, or just because of the high levels of humidity it's just like getting LA. the upgrading mm. and damaging, like even in this case. But the other day, uh, we have this Portuguese team that's now come to go and they have one of their, pro part of their project is to do uh, research on our paintings to trace to which 
school or workshop. Yes, Monica Reyes and all? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. whole team, okay. Vanessa and Monica and Giuseppe Stana. Giuseppe Stana is an art conservator who was involved in our project in the church as well. So he was saying there is some sort of hope for this and they, we can, you know, conserve it. Good. Yeah, and Good. we will do it. Because it's it's a small patch, it's achievable. Yeah. <laughs> we, we can do it. Well, it's, it's not that unusual in, in churches of this age, anywhere in the world, to have yeah. just a very small bit of uh, taste of what, so you can imagine you can how imagine everything else used to look, used to look exactly. without trying to maintain yeah. it. Yeah, just keep what we have yeah. without distorting and trying to imagine right. what was right. not right. there. And he says he even has images of before the museum moved here, that was in 2000, he thinks he has complete clear images. Oh wow. So that would be a great help in their actually doing the conservation. Yeah. Yeah. Very unique. Yeah. It's the monstrance and the tabernacle in the depicted in this form of a pelican. Uh, What's unique about it? You don't see this kind of a depiction anywhere else in the world. You might see the pelican in Christian art, uh, medieval uh, medieval Christian art, but like this with the monstrance and a tabernacle, it was not seen anywhere else in the world. And it, this was made for the convent of Santa Monica in the 17th century. So the local uh, uh, goldsmiths and silversmiths were very advanced in those they were days? They very advanced. They must have been given some kind yeah. of a sketch or, a, uh, or a, an image to replicate. But uh, the craft yeah. and their skill was very, 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 very advanced. In fact, 10 to 15 years after the Portuguese came, they took back a goldsmith to, uh, to Portugal, to Portugal. Raulu Shatim. They took him back and presented him to the king. Ah, and then and he would be commissioned to do yeah. uh, work for the king. So, of course, they, they felt they were superior in silver filigree or something like that, I think. Uh, Portugal. Maybe. maybe yeah, but yeah. But in gold, these guys were acknowledged to be far superior. Uh -huh. yeah. So, this image of this object was taken out only on a special. That's the monitor, so the rest of the time it will not be. Uh, it's huge, it's huge. It's so unique. It is, it's very unique. And it actually has rails that would be placed around. Uh, uh, yeah. Rails, rails. Silver rails. Rails, rails. Yeah. I have an old image, maybe I can share see, it. I see, I see, you know, I see. Uh, I had it on my phone that it got deleted. But I have the, this uh, object was taken when uh, Pope came for the first time to India, to Bombay in 1964. Okay. But, uh, so the belief, the belief is that it's pecking its own... The belief was that it was piercing... Its own breast. Its chest and feeding... Its baby. Baby. Uh, Blood. Especially in the process of sacrificing mm -hmm. and dying. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why mm -hmm. the comparison with Christ. But in fact, the pelican has a pouch in which she stores her food. Mm -hmm. I see, I so see. So the little kids I are see. very, uh, you know, they come here, they're just amazed with the whole story I of see. the pelican. And then they, they tell me that this doesn't look like a pelican. It doesn't it's look like anything like a pelican. Like <laughs> yeah. like she's, she's a ornithologist. Oh, wow, you are. Okay. Well, we also have a lot of pelicans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have a big pouch underneath. Yes, a, a, a very big pouch. Yeah. And which doesn't appear doesn't like in no grass covers. I'm just wondering, maybe the silversmith then didn't know what a pelican is. Yeah, how do you translate ideas? How do you translate yeah. ideas? Very difficult. Yeah. So they would more like a peacock. Peacock, uh, an eagle, something that yeah. we are uh, more yeah. used to seeing yeah, around, true. around there. Silver bird. <laughs> <laughs> so the story is also so this uh, when the this object went to Bombay and it came back in the nineteen sixties, it came back with one wing missing. Really? Mm. It's true? And it is true because till two thousand and four this exhibit in the museum was with only one wing. Uh, they didn't find it. Yeah. They just got, uh, they identified a silversmith to, to make the next. Uh, Which yeah. was a new one? I'm not telling you. Yeah. I can make out it's <laughs> the right one. Uh, it's obviously newer. Yeah, it's newer. Uh, but it's amazing because they managed to find a silversmith even in the wow. 21st century wow. to, to, wow. to work on a, maybe not to perfection, yeah, yeah, but it's yeah, there. Yeah. I 
one, it was at this at that point in time, you know, it must have just gotten its place from moving hmm. it from one place to another. Yeah, because yes. the wing it doesn't have much antique value in that yes. sense, and silver, it's yeah. just silver. It would be hard to sorry. It would be hard to try to fence it if you wanted to sell it. Sell yeah. it, yeah. You never know. Just that you know, while handling it and moving hmm. it. Of course, now we take so much more care, especially because it's in a museum. No, in those days, I think it was like just treated as, you know, kind of some hand-ons, which hand-downs, which really didn't matter too much. Can I, can you stop for a minute? Yeah, yeah.